Gotta go places, gotta see things. See new places and brand new things. Gotta go places and do things. Maybe to forget it. What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2025 Subaru Outback, courtesy of Sioka Subaru in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because this has, of course, Subaru's legendary all-wheel drive system. You also have excellent safety, really with all Subarus at this point as well. Incredible resale value, and there are some minor changes for the 2025 Outback as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there is an absolute insane amount of trim levels for the 2025 Outback. So I'm just going to put a little chart looking thing on the screen right now. Feel free to take a look. Essentially, the pricing starts at $30,290. It goes up to $44,190. And there's a ton of different prices in between. But so you can imagine with all of these trim levels, there are two different power plants actually for the Outback. First one is going to belong to all those non XT trim levels. That one is powered by a 2.5 liter four cylinder boxer engine, putting out 182 horsepower, 5,800 RPM, 176 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM. That power being sent to all four wheels through Subaru's legendary symmetrical all wheel drive system. Power being sent to the ground through a linear Tronic CVT, zero to 60 time, approximately 8.7 seconds there. With FPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 32 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then there is that other engine configuration, of course, belonging to the XT trim levels. That one, a little more powerful, a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder boxer engine, putting out 260 horsepower, 5,600 RPM, 277 pound feet of torque coming in at 2,000 RPM. Power sent to all four wheels yet again through a CVT. Zero to 60 time for that one though, 5.8 seconds. Pretty darn impressive there. MPG numbers then coming in at 22 in the city, 29 on the highway, but still, taking regular unleaded fuel. Sometimes with upgraded engine, it goes to premium, but it's still regular in this case, so that's pretty cool. But anyhow, before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the Outback, I did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's essentially an X mode. It's accessed through the, there's a little car icon on the infotainment screen, but if you hit that, you can actually choose between snow and dirt, normal, and deep snow and mud. So if you're going off-roading in the Outback, as a lot of people do, because it is somewhat of an off-road vehicle, you got the X mode option. Options, uh, on top of that legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system but having got all of that out of the way now let's go ahead and find a straightaway I want to put the paddle shifters here to the test first keep in mind this is a CVT so it's going to be simulated gears but there is a full manual shift mode you just slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left and it's going to display what simulated gear you are in up on the digital portion of the gauges but having said that let me go ahead and set up my GoPro here and let's uh, let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are gonna react for us here all right let's see if it's just for me Oh, it doesn't. Well, that's kind of cool. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, it's kind of cool. Actually, they are kind of quick. It's still, you can tell it's a CVT. There's no doubt about that. So we're not actually shifting through anything technically, but uh, it's kind of cool. Um, I probably wouldn't use them personally, but they're there if you wanted them. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get back full control to the Outback here. Just slide the shifter back to the right there. And uh, now the Outback is full control. And let's find one more straight away. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, so before we do this, guys, we do not have the XT trim level with us here today. So I just wanted to make that clear. But in three, two, one, go. It feels like zero to 60 in eight and a half seconds. That thing is, uh, it's not the quickest thing in the world, but that's not what this particular Outback is kind of uh, bred to do. If you wanted a quicker Outback, you got the XT trim levels that we don't have with us here today. And that's gonna be a night and day difference, quite honestly. So if you wanted a quicker Outback, that's the, that's the option for you. But 
uh, it's one of those things where the more you drive a vehicle, the more you learn how to drive it. So you shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway over time. You're gonna learn how to uh, how much power this thing actually has. But having said that, for me personally, I wouldn't mind a little bit more power. Maybe the XT trim level might actually be the one for me. But I don't. The one thing I do like about this is you're probably gonna get better reliability with a non-turbocharged engine as you would with the XT, having that be a turbocharged engine. So it's kind of a trade-off there. So. Make your own decisions. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So four-wheel ventilated disc brakes do come standard. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it comes in at 125 feet. Let me just go ahead and uh, it's on the softer side of things. It is. So it's not a firm braking feel as I didn't expect it to be, but would have minded if they firmed that up a little bit. But having said that, that, that 125 foot number, that's right on par for the course as far as what this vehicle should be producing. So a lot of SUVs will give you in the 130s, some uh, sports and ends will give you in the one teens. So 125, right in the middle of the pack. Nothing wrong with that. But then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back, double wishbone type rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, that's actually been really good. Like that's one of the first things I noticed. This is definitely absorbing York's road imperfections quite nicely. So when it comes to ride quality, it's actually really impressive. So I don't have any issues there and I'm surprised because it's not like it has an adaptive damping suspension or anything fancy. It's just a dang good tuned suspension. So I don't mind that. As far as steering feel goes, it's 100% on the uh, loosey-goosey side of things, as expected for the Outback. Wouldn't have minded maybe a steering feel firm mode like Volvo tends to do. It doesn't have to be a dedicated sport driving mode or anything like that, but just a steering feel firm mode to kind of give it a heavier weight. That's what I personally prefer, and this is a loosey-goosey steering feel, but I don't know. It's to be expected, I suppose. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 24 miles per hour or something like that right now, so it's actually not bad. Like, it's a pretty darn serene cabin for what it is. I mean, when you really get on it, you can hear that linear Tronic CVT that gets a little bit noisy, but other than that, it's really not bad. I don't mind it, but touching your rear visibility again, something I don't mind. I can see perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror there. So definitely shouldn't have any issues there. And another big perk to the Outback is uh, rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on every single trim level of this thing. So whenever the Outback detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you, just like automatic headlights. So just one less thing you got to worry about there. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Subaru Outback. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Subaru Outback finished in black, in case you were curious of the obvious exterior color name that we had on this one here today. But let's go ahead and start with where this one is made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number four, indicating that the new Outback is built and assembled here in the US, believe it or not. So starting up front, front fascia is gonna differ slightly depending upon the trim level that you go with, of course, but to the sides, LED headlights do come standard with LED daytime running lights. Do you get the automatic feature as well along with automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it says the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there down below you guys can see you got led fog lights coming standard as well you gotta love that but my very favorite feature up front at least is going to be the led steering responsive headlights that's something that's an option usually on luxury automakers. So the fact that Subaru puts them standard on, on the Outback here, that's pretty darn cool. So essentially what that does is when you're going around a bend at night, the headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle, better help illuminating what is around that bend. So you're less likely to hit an alien or Sasquatch or a troll or a gnome or whatever the case. So that is pretty darn cool. I love that personally. And got the silver accent found in the bottom portion there as well, but quite a bit of ground clearance. Typically with Subaru, it comes in at 8.7 inches. So it is a good bit up there. And like I said, you got the symmetrical all wheel drive system. So this is definitely something that you can at least do a little bit of overlanding with and probably even go on the beach with quite honestly. But 
Anywho, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Outback. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, and so but now since we are around to the side of the Outback, roof rails, of course, do come standard on all trim levels across the board. Just below that, you got rear privacy glass coming standard as well, some chrome window surrounds. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are either gonna be finished in body colored or gloss black, but you're really not gonna tell the difference because we got black on the exterior today anyways. But yeah, it depends upon the configuration that you go with, but LED integrated turn signals also also come standard with those and I kind of like how the uh, the chrome window surrounds you guys can probably see that kind of continue on to the bottom portion of those side mirrors it's a nice little accent piece I guess you could say but also you got the Outback lettering found on the side skirts there in typical Outback fashion always liked that and then taking a look down at the wheel setup you're gonna find 18 inch alloys rocked in Yokohama so big fan of that as well but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and swing around to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of the outback all the way to the top you're going to find a matte black shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper of course you have those ledc shaped taillights they look pretty darn good back there as well the uh lettering the outback lettering the all-wheel drive lettering all that stuff is either going to be finished in gloss black or chrome we got the chrome finish of course and just below it all you will find a single exhaust outlets kind of tucked away on the driver's side in the back there but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the Outback, when it comes to opening up that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free power tailgate, so you gotta love that, but there is a button on the key fob, there's a button on the tailgate itself then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 32.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down. There's actually some levers found in the cargo area to fold those rear seats down, so that was super easy. They automatically folded down all the way, so bumping that up to 75.6 cubic feet, so quite a bit of space there for sure you got a 12 volt power outlet back there a couple uh grocery bag hooks which i was surprised to see got some uh tie down anchors of course and uh if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will find a spare tire along with all of the tools needed to change that spare tire so plenty going on in the cargo area there but then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 39.5 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there rear center armrest with cup holders does come stand you got rear ventilation as well you get a USB A and USB C charging port back there for the rear passenger so I loved that then if you were to go with a limited trim level and up like we have today you will also get heated rear seats so you could spoil the rear passengers a little bit there as well so huge fan of that the only thing missing really is rear window sunshades but other than that rear seats are done incredibly well but then make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable front seats do come standard on that base trim level but the premium and up it's all going to give you a power adjustment driver's seat also with the premium and up you're going to get heated front seats as well ventilated front seats are going to come on the touring trim levels cloth seating for the base and premium soft text water repellent upholstery for the onyx and wilderness and then leather seating for the touring and the limited like we have today so overall as far as seat comfort goes it was wonderful absolutely no issues there and i do like the two-tone color combination that we have with us here today too it's kind of the tan and the black combination so big fan of that but now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it's going to be leather wrapped for the premium and up and then heated for the onyx but then also the touring trim level and up so that is pretty darn cool the heated steering wheel buttons found on the back side of the steering wheel here that's not too shabby i like that now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key all of your buttons are located on one side of the key by the way lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate there but the unlock button is actually the subaru logo but it is all keyless entry though with the push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right you got a kind of small digital screen front and center which by the way to control what is on that digital the screen uh there are steering wheel mounts controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there but gives you things like your outside temperature uh digital speedometer up on the digital screen as well trip a trip b of course you got your x mode kind of information found up there as well if i were to turn on x mode there uh it gives you a cool little picture up there too that's pretty cool so anyway 
anyways pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the screen at least but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality you're going to find a power moonroof for the onyx and then touring trim level and up overhead sunglass holder also coming standard up top here i liked that for the onyx trim level and up you're going to find home link controls to up to three different garage doors found in the bottom portion of this rear view mirror here also has a compass on the rear view mirror in the upper right hand corner so that's kind of cool automatic climate control is going to come on the base dual zoom climate control is going to come on the premium trim level and up uh i love the interior quality though they did an incredible job quite honestly i like the contrast stitching on the doors a lot of soft touch material especially on the doors just above the passenger side glove box you got a little bit of rubberized storage which is surrounded with a gloss black finish and then more contrast stitching just surrounding the shifter again gloss black finish i love that a lot of manufacturers would have left that a matte gray or matte black plastic but subaru didn't here with the outback so big fan of that just in front of that you got a little bit of more of rubberized storage and electromechanical parking brake just behind the shifter you got your dual cup holders and within the center armrest you do have a you know, okay amount of space not a ton but there's a 12 volt power outlet in there though so that's kind of cool so like i said is super actually did a really good job with the interior quality here so many soft touch finishes that most other manufacturers wouldn't do so I don't know I kind of like it but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen because it is going to differ dependent upon the trim level that you go with so for that base trim you're going to get a seven inch dual infotainment screen kind of setup but for all other trim levels being the premium trim leveled up you're going to get an 11.6 inch tablet style color touch screen display either way though you still get bluetooth and audio streaming either way you get android auto apple carplay you can actually check out your climate control information up there you can set your heated seats up there as well like I said earlier if you hit that car icon button you can set your x mode if you wanted to go off road in the outback so that's pretty cool you can check out driving statistics up there and your radio information of course so when it comes to the sound systems there are three of them believe it or not you're going to get four speakers for the bass trim level six speakers for the premium and then all other trims are going to give you a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system with 576 watts and a subwoofer in the cargo area which you guys may have seen earlier but anywho having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one everything's gonna be all right you hold me okay that was really good like you could feel the bass there was a good bit of bass there but the clarity was crystal clear so Harman Kardon is a very well-known uh, producer of sound systems I see them in BMWs and plenty of other vehicles out there so it's a really good sound system for the Outback I'll just put it that way but last thing I wanted to mention you guys on that infotainment screen at least is when you do put the Outback in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start the Outback is an IIHS top safety pick plus which you guys know is the very highest designation given by IIHS so you gotta love that front side side curtain airbags do come standard you got a driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're gonna have last aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard subaru eyesight this is pretty cool it's typical subaru fashion here adaptive cruise control with lane centering pre-collision braking lane departure and sway warning lane keep assist and automatic emergency braking as well then if you were to go with the onyx trim level and up that's going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and reverse automatic braking then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the outback definitely comfortable seats without a doubt i'm still playing around with the uh, power lumbar which is incredibly adjustable uh best safety rating possible you can't beat an iihs top safety pick plus so if you got kids you got peace of mind there that they're going to be safe in the back there best all-wheel drive system humanly possible that's been tested plenty of times online i've seen that um subaru goes the furthest in the snow and if you think about it subaru originally made their all-wheel drive system to do rally racing on the snow and dirt so the fact that it's the best it makes perfect sense the only constructive criticism i can honestly think of because even the interior quality is absolutely amazing the only constructive criticism i could think of is it's kind of emotionless driving so it's not the quickest thing in the world maybe the xt trims would be different like i said i didn't have it today but it's not the quickest thing in the world it has a soft braking feel with a loosey-goosey steering feel it's just kind of it's point a to point b kind of car that's all i'm gonna say it's not particularly exciting i'll just put it that way but anyway that's all i got on it though so that's really not that bad but let me know what you guys think of the outback in the comment section below 
that's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in any new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.